Shalom. <clears throat> Shalom, everyone. This is your boy, Dano, a.k.a. Dan Yawa. And I want to give honors to the Most High and also to Mashiach because without them, you know, I wouldn't have the wisdom and understanding. Uh, and also, I want to, you know, give a shout out to my elders uh, that said that taught me these things. So, uh, I'm here today because I wanted to address a comment that was made, actually, a few comments that was made by. Um, this person named Israel family uh, this person is a Negro only Israelite I assume uh, just from their comments uh, about the video that I made I um, <clears throat> I want to address you know uh, basically the stuff that they that this person has said and also what other Negro only Israelites say um, you know, I know I notice a reoccurring theme about these so-called Negro-only Hebrew Israelites. I notice that a lot of them spell Israel like this, Israel, or they have an I in between the Y and the S, um, which is Yiddish. Um, you know, I'm not being pride for anything like that or boastful, but these these same people, these Negro-onlys, these same people who tell you that so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans that aren't Negro, aren't Native Americans, yet they use Yiddish. <laughs> yet they use Yiddish, which is a known fake language and not true Hebrew. You know, yeah, you know, there are debates on what his name is, but at least, you know, brothers who try to go with the Paleo Hebrew, we're working with something that is the actual real language and not a mixture of like three or four languages, you know what I'm saying? Um, I know it's another thing. These people don't have elders, actual physical, tangible elders that they can sit down and talk, you know, talk with. Uh, most of these brothers and sisters with the name Yisrael, um, you know, these these so-called uh, Negro only Israelites, they didn't have, they don't, they didn't have elders. Um, because they want to be teaching them this mess. I can guarantee you that. Um, they they don't belong to congregations for most part. Um, they don't practice Zephaniah two and one. Gather yourself together, O nation, not desire. Um, it's just a lot of things, man. A lot of things, you know. Um, you know, it, it's it's sad, really. It it really is. Um. So yeah, <laughs> it's it's really disgusting um, that these guys don't have real elders to teach them. You know, they don't have because they don't have real understanding of the Bible and of history, and that's the main thing that I think is holding these brothers back. Is that, and then also they have a hatred towards so-called Native Americans and. Latinos, maybe because you know they've been harmed or done wrong by Latinos, so they hate them for that reason. And then, like I said, some of them are just lacking um, in education. Period. They're lacking understanding because they had a lack of a real elder that sat them down, taught them. Um, you know these things, and also they have a lack of history. You know, most of these brothers like. They just go off of physical looks rather than, huh? That's my woman. She she's a uh, flight attendant. She's up here telling me that she still got one more flight to do, and it's a two-hour flight. So her ass ain't getting done till one a.m. in the morning. <sighs> Let me text back to her real quick. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so anyways, um, I noticed that they don't, they lack these things. You know, I know, like I said, they lack history and understand it because I think if they studied history more, they would know that these so-called, um, these so-called Latinos are our people, you know, not all of them, of course, not all of them, you know, because this guy, 
he deleted one of his comments. He had three comments, and I can show you, you know, just by scrolling down here, you can see that he had three comments, but he deleted one of them. Because one of them, he was, he was actually telling me, like, to flush this bullshit down the toilet. And that was after I told him I was going to make this video to address him. Um, so I can't read the comment in full because I no longer have it. Well, actually, I have it in the previous video because I attempted to make a video. But then I got busy and I, I couldn't finish the video. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, you know, I would debate. I'm open to debate to any of you guys. Uh, there was a brother who wanted to debate me a while back. I never got back to him. I gotta find out who he is and see if he wanted to debate. I was actually going to debate a guy earlier, a, a Negro only Israelite, and um, he flaked out on me. I know that he was scared because I didn't even know who this cat was. I guess he has sent me a, fair, a friend request probably like a few weeks or a few months ago uh, because he was actually trying to get my woman. <laughs> he didn't know that my woman uh, was already in a relationship. So, um, you know, he basically, I guess he has like a page on YouTube where, I mean, on Facebook where he teaches or whatever. And, um, anyways, the point is, is that I, I added him today through my, my girlfriend because she wanted to, um, you know, she she saw it and she wants to respond to it, so she told me about it, and I told that I, you know, I was like, okay, I'll talk to this brother. We can have a debate, discussion, whatever. And this brother, he didn't want to, de he really didn't want to talk over video or whatever. I guess he said he was at work. I'm like, okay, I don't know if that's an excuse or not, but I give him the benefit of the doubt. He's at work, so I was like, okay, let's set up a time. Let's do it around a certain time whenever you have free time in the near future it was like oh today i'm off at 5 p.m i'm like cool i'll holler at you 5 p.m 5 p.m comes around he doesn't even message me 6 7 30 comes around i, I said the message like around 6 something like i have to leave around 6 30 uh 7 30 and it was like around 6 30 still didn't hit me back up so i know he was probably scared because you know i i i do my research i have my arsenal I have scripts, you know, I have my script, I have my swords ready, man. So, you know, I could slay him with either three of my swords, you know, a scripture, common sense, or actual history and artifacts. You know what I'm saying? So, he can get one of them. You know, I, I would love to be Sola Scriptura, you know, <laughs> use the scripture to slay his ass, but some people need a little bit more than that, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I'll use a sword to, to slice his gut, and when he falls to his knees, I, <laughs> I'll, use the, I'll use the other sword, uh, you know, of history, or even common sense, just to take that head off. Boom! You know what I'm saying? But I don't say that out of pride, but that is what this is. That's what this truth is. It's, it's my sword. You know, so anybody who wants to debate, we can get it in. I, you know, we just got to get to the right time and everything like that for both of us. But... Let me see what she said real quick. Oh, she's taking off. Okay. Um, so sorry about that guys. I'm not gonna respond to her. Okay, guys, so basically, you know, for you Negro-only Israelites, I have a question. Where are the Israelites today? That's what I want to know. I, um, you know, I debate people on... You know, on Facebook posts or on YouTube comments, and those really are conducive to learning. I make these videos so that people can be edified and they can learn. Um, and you know, going back and forth from YouTube comments, most people don't learn that way because 
people don't respond immediately, you may forget what you have to say, blah, blah, blah. It's just not conducive to learning or even to just debate, really. It's not. Um, so, you know, I, I never really get people to ask, like, people hardly answer this question for me and they hardly an answer it in a way that is understandable and makes sense or doesn't seem hypocritical uh, and without them backsliding and all this stuff. I mean, because I've seen a lot of uh, Negro only Israelites backslide on their words so often, you know, especially when they catch yourself up or if they get caught up with that sword by somebody else who's debating them, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, so basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to tell you what I've heard from so-called Negro only Israelites. You know, so basically, you know, I asked them, where are the 12 tribes today? And I give, I give, you know, various answers. One of the answers, especially for Judah, they tell me that Judah is located here in the Americas. And I'm like, okay, I, I agree that the bulk of Judah is located over here in the Americas. Okay. But then based on like, say if I, you know, say certain things, they would try to say that um, the bulk of Judah is over in, um, over in Africa. And I'm like, okay, well, can you show me either of these things? Can you show me where, what's your proof? You know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, in First Thessalonians, it said, prove all things and retain that is that which is good. Something like that. It, it, I, I said it almost to a T, but that's basically what it says, you know, prove all things and, and attain that which is good. So you're supposed to prove all things. But, and this is to all my listeners, prove all things, prove your arguments, you know, but even if you lose your debate, take what is good. You know, if you learn something, don't sit there and, and, and shun it just because it's against what you believe. You know what I'm saying? Don't do that to yourself because in, in, in the end, you're gutting yourself, you're killing yourself. You know what I'm saying? And. I truly believe that these these Negro only Israelites they're going to cut their own heads off because they're denying the Most High his children they're denying Hamashiach his sheep and when we deter these people away by saying that they're not Israelites what we're doing is putting their blood on our hands you know what I'm saying so we need to stop that because that's not our job to say who isn't Israel didn't didn't yeah didn't Yehoshua or Yahawashai? I'm just gonna say Hamashiach. Did he not say that he was gonna separate the sheep from the goats? That he was going to, you know, uh, be the reaper who was going to, you know, separate the wheat from the tares. That's Hamashiach's job. That's not ours to say who isn't. Our job is to go out here and try to w and, and spread this gospel throughout all nations because we know that our people are spread throughout the four corners of the earth. That's what our job is. Our job isn't to say, no, you're not Israelite because you don't look like us. Because I have seen Negro only Israelites say that all 12 tribes are Negro. All 12 tribes are black. Uh, and I'm going to get into all of that in a minute. But, okay, we're going to deal with, we're going to deal with uh, Judah being over here, right? For Negro only Israelites who say that majority of Judah is over here. Okay. All right. Let's go over to Jeremiah 3, verse 17. Okay. Jeremiah 3, 17. No, 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 no. You know what? Let's go to 16. And I'm just reading 16 and 17 to set a stage so that we can know what's happening. We can know what tense is speaking in. Whether this is past tense, present tense, or future tense. Okay, so it says, And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land, 
in those days, saith Yahweh, they shall say no more the Ark of Covenant of the Lord. They shall say no more the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall uh, shall that be done anymore. So the Ark of the Covenant, the laws, statutes, and commandments, everything that was given to us in that first covenant will be done away with. Why? Because when Yehoshua returns, according to Second Peter, we're going to be ushered into a new covenant. So that's what this is talking about. When does that happen? Well, let's read a little bit more. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of Yahweh, or the Lord. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imaginations of their evil heart. So this is future tense. Because if anybody wants to say that this is any captivity that has happened or is happening right now, or I mean, well, any captivity that has happened, you're gravely mistaken. Why? Because it's talking about that at this time when this event takes place, we will be ushered into a new co we will be ushered into a new covenant. Um, Jerusalem will, will be the throne of the Most High. All nations will be gathered unto it. Uh, and neither will they walk after their own evil hearts, the imagination of the evil hearts. So we won't be doing wickedness anymore. We know that that's not talking about any of the captivities back then. That didn't happen during the Babylonian captivity. That didn't happen during the Syrian captivity. That didn't happen during um, the, the Roman captivity. This didn't happen during the Egyptian captivity at all. So this is future tense. Okay. So let's continue to Jeremiah of uh, chapter three, verse 18. In those days, in those days, the house of Judah, not the remnant, the house of Judah. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, not the remnant of Israel, the house of Israel. And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the, sorry, they will come out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for inheritance unto your fathers. So it's saying that in this day, when all this is going to be implemented, that Judah, the house of Judah, not the remnant, I'm stressing it, the house of Judah, the house of Israel, shall come together well shall walk with the house of israel so that means that these people are already coinciding together they're already coexisting together so for brothers and sisters who are saying that yeah majority of judah is over here well you guys y'all usually say that when i ask you well who are the other nine tribes you guys tell me that the so-called africans are the other nine tribes and don't get it twisted see the thing with us people who believe in the 12 tri 12 chart tribe sorry whoo tired um it's almost 12 a.m in the morning but anyways us brothers and sisters who believe in the 12 charts tribes who believe that the native americans latinos are uh israelites we don't deny that we still have brothers and sisters in africa because we know that we're spread to the four corners of the earth you know what i'm saying um, but y'all, so-called Negro only, y'all sit there and say, no, they can't, these Native Americans, Latinos can't be Hebrew Israelites because they don't look like us. Y'all say like the seed of Israel, the seed of Israel, he thinks that all Israelites have to look Negro. He don't think that we mix or anything like that. And I think that's complete asinine. Um, I do believe that the brother has good intentions, but he's greatly misled and I don't I'm not sure but I don't believe that he has a elder that has came from any old school that has taught him um, but so most Negro only Israelites they say that the other nine tribes are over in Africa okay well if that's so why does it say that 
the, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. Show them that they already coexist together. And they shall come together out of the land of the north. So it's saying that they're going to come out of the land of the north. To the land that I have given for an inheritance to your father. So they're going to come out of the land of the north together. First of all, it already shows that they're coexisting together. But then they're going to come out together. Out of the land of the north. You know. So, I know that the land of the North is so-called United States of America, uh, Mystery Babylon. That is the land of the North. So, your theory doesn't make sense. If the house of Judah is over here in the Americas and um, the house of Israel is over in Africa, how are they going to walk out of the land of the North, their captivity together? to you know how they're gonna do that that doesn't make any sense um so for you other brothers y'all negro only israelites who say that no f because I'm, i hear this most of the time for their argument's sake to try to prove their point and not look stupid so and i've seen people you know backslide on their word first saying that judah is over here and they're like no 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 okay well majority of judah is over in africa so this is for those guys so okay the house of Judah is over in Africa. The house of Israel is over in Africa. So all 12 tribes, majority of them are over in Africa. Yeah, according to y'all, they're still spread out throughout the earth. But majority of them, of them are in Africa. Majority of the house of Judah and the house of Israel is in Africa. Okay. So they're going to come out the land of the north together. Okay. So I heard two different... Uh, theories on what the land of the north is with negro only israelites one of them being uh syria the other land of the north that i heard was russia so to my brothers who believe that are you telling me that we're gonna go into another captivity after this we're gonna go into another captivity is is that what you guys are saying to us is that we're gonna go into another captivity Okay, because I'm not looking forward to another captivity. I'm sure you guys aren't either. So really think about that. Um, but okay, let's say let's say that Russia is a land of the north, right? Okay. Um, let's go to Genesis 49 uh, for uh, for a breakdown. Okay, on what's going to befall Judah in the last days. Now we're gonna go to Genesis. Uh, 49 and 1 because I want to set the stage so you guys can know what's going on So Genesis 49 and 1 it says and Jacob called unto his sons and said gather yourselves together That I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days Okay, so Jacob gathered all 12 of his sons uh, So that he can tell them what will befall them in the last days. Okay. Well, he gathered all of his sons together so you can tell the world will be following the last days. So we're gonna go down. We're gonna go to uh, Genesis forty nine and eight. Now I wanted to let you know that these, this, you know, these breakdowns uh, have multiple meanings. You know what I'm saying? So it says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren brethren shall praise. You know. Uh, when you look at us so-called Okay, so anyways, I'm, just, I'm not gonna break it down right now. I'm just gonna read it. So Judah Thou art he whom thy brother shall praise they shall be uh, Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies Thy father's children shall bow down before thee Okay, so for you Negro only Israelites who believe that Judah is over here this makes complete sense and I'm gonna show you why this isn't why the house of Judah is not over in Africa in the last days which are the days that we're in I'm gonna show you why the house of Judah is over here in the United States the bulk of Judah is here over over here in the United States I'm gonna show you why it says Judah thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise what he's saying about that is that Judah was always the leader out of all his brethren. Out of all his brothers, he was the leader. And they praised him for that. 
you know what I'm saying, for his leadership. Um, but also, when you look at so-called African Americans, we're praised by all nations for our talents. You know what I'm saying? How? Jamaica isn't praised for th being well-versed and talented in almost everything they do. Even though they're our brothers, we are, as so-called African Americans are. Haitians aren't, as so-called African Americans are. Africans aren't, as so-called so African Americans are. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it's talking about, that uh, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. And then also it says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Okay. That's saying that basically we're going to be fighting. We're going to be basically in our enemy's face 24-7. That our hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. So... I know this is speaking about African Americans. Why? Because we're always fighting against the so-called white oppressors. We're always protesting. We're always doing something that pisses them off. You know what I'm saying? Look at the Black Panthers. Look at Marcus Garvey, his movement. Look at the movement in the 60s, 70s. Look at the protesters that we have today. We're always in the neck of our enemies. We're always proving ourselves to be better than them. We're always fighting them. For you Negro only Israelites who believe that the house of Israel, I mean the house of Judah is over in Africa, where are the enemies who they're all up into? Because all those African countries over there, they are self-governed. They govern themselves, not white people. Majority of those countries over there are ruled by black corrupt black people they're not up in the neck of their enemies not at all but so called African American black men are man we up in our enemies face every damn day they're giving us issues we're giving them issues you know what I'm saying so the land of the north is not Assyria it's not Russia it is America Okay, so I don't I don't know. I mean this doesn't fit Africa. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. They they're not even they're not even fighting anyone right now. I mean sure South Africa is, but they're about the only ones over there. So anyways it says that thy father's children shall bow down before thee. This is talking about also our talent, but also it's talking about Hamashiach. How we're going to be, how he is basically praised, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and Judah is a lion's whelp. For, uh, from, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. And he stooped down. And he couched as a lion. So this saying that, you know, for the prey, he's couching, he's crouching down, basically about to pounce. And as an old lion, whom shall rouse him up? So he couched down as a lion, but he didn't get back up. Why? It's just like us African Americans. You know, when one of our kids are being killed or when we're being uh, persecuted or anything like that, we want to get up and we want to fight, but then we never follow through with it. You know, with the whole Trayvon Martin thing, when Zimmer, we were, we were, man, we were fucking pissed when that young boy got killed. But then when we found out he wasn't guilty, what we do? We just lay back. We just stayed down. We just laid down like an old fucking lion. So who's going to rouse us up? What's going to get us up? I can tell you what's going to get us up. These laws, statutes, and commandments. When we keep this shit, when we find our heritage and we know who we are, we're going to wake back up. We're going to get back up. We're going to fight. But anyways, it's not about this. It's not about this at all. Um, but yeah. I mean, we're over here. The majority of Judah is over here. The house of Judah is over here not over there okay so that you know that's just one of the, one of the things right there that I wanted to talk about um, so with with Genesis 49 um, yeah, Genesis 49 okay yeah that's basically all I wanted from Genesis 49 so we know that 
the house of Israel is dwelling with the house of Judah. The house of Israel is the other nine tribes. The house of Judah is the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So they're going to be coming out of the land of the north together. The land of the north is not Assyria or uh, Russia, because if so, we're going to be going to another captivity. Uh, but that doesn't make sense because it says that Judah will be in the neck of thy enemies. Uh, and Africans are not in the neck of their enemies. Us so-called black people are. We live amongst our fucking enemies. We're in the, we are in the neck of our enemies, period. So America is the land in the north that we're coming out of. So another question is, okay, well, another thing that I've came across is so-called Negro only Israelites, they say that Latinos are not Israelites because they're mixed. They say that Native Americans are not Israelites because they don't look Negro uh, and that they're mixed, okay? They say that they're a Mamzer. They, they call them Mamzers. They say that they're a Mamzer, a bastard. And you guys are sorely, sorely mistaken because y'all you don't know what a Mamzer is. Y'all don't know what a bastard is at all for y'all be saying that. So we're going to go over to Deuteronomy 23, verse 2, I think it is, uh, if I remember correctly. Right. Oops. How, no, why in the hell did... Oh, okay. 23, verse 2. Why is... I hate when this stuff acts weird. Okay. So this is what most... Negro only Israelites used to try to debunk the 12 tribes chart and say that Latinos and Native Americans are not Israelites. Okay, so we're going to read it. Deuteronomy 23, verse 2. It says, A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to the tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So, and also they say that biracial people, mixed people can't, uh, can't be Israelite. They can't enter into the congregation of the Most High. Okay? So we're going to go, we're going to go to the tools, and we're going to go over here, and we're going to look at the definition of a Mamzer. Okay, so a bastard. Here it is. Mamzer. There's a root word. Okay, Mamzer. It's a masculine noun. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so Mamzer. Bastard, child of incest, Ill, uh, illegitimate child, and I want to let you know that a incest baby is a bastard, and an incest baby is an illegitimate child. It can be either of those things, okay? I mean, both things at the same time. So, bastard, mixed population, born of Jewish father and a heathen mother, or vice versa, okay? So Strong's definitions, okay, from a unused root meaning of alienate a mongrel born of Jewish, uh, born of a Jewish father and a mother, I mean, and a heathen mother bastard. Okay, so, okay, so we're going to find out by process of elimination, we're going to find out what it means. We're going to find out. If it's a child of incest or if it's a child of mixed heritage, okay? We're going to see which one it is. Why? Because right now we're about to use common sense, period. We're about to use common sense, okay? Because according to Deuteronomy 23, verse 2, it says that a bastard cannot enter into the congregation of the Most High, okay? That's what it says. Um, so... It says, a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So that's saying that he can't. Basically, when it says to the, even to the fourth or to the tenth generation, it's basically saying that they can never uh, become an Israelite. Okay? That's what it's saying. Okay, so we found out some of the things what Mamzer could be. We're about to do a process of elimination. Okay? All right, so I got a question, guys. 
Joseph. We well, remember Joseph, right? Okay, he was a son of Jacob. He was sold off to Egypt by his brothers. His older brothers sold him off, okay? He was imprisoned because he was sold off. He started to prophesy, have dreams, which got him noticed by the Pharaoh, and he became the second most powerful man in Egypt, okay? He married, in his time of being in uh, Egypt, he married a Kushite woman. He married an Egyptian woman, okay? A Hamite. By the time his brothers came down, they all had kids. It was like about 40 something of them that came down into Egypt after they found out that Joseph was their, in, in fact, their brother. Um, Joseph also had two kids of his own, okay? His sons was Ephraim and Manasseh. Manasseh being his oldest son, Ephraim being his youngest son, but Ephraim being the one who got the the blessing from his father, uh, Israel or Jacob. Okay. If Mamzers cannot enter into the congregation of the Most High, why did Manasseh? And Ephraim become tribes of Israel. Is that what a mamzer is? Because according to the definition of a mamzer, of you guys' definition of a mamzer, uh, it's someone born of a Jewish, you know, ancestry and a heathen ancestry, right? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I mean. You guys have me confused. <laughs> okay. So, you guys, y'all probably saying, well, well, that was before, that was before they created the law because Deuteronomy 20, uh, 23 was after, uh, after they uh, exodus out of Egypt. This was after the Passover, right? Okay. All right. I hear you guys. I hear you. Okay, well, let's go over to First Chronicles three uh, twenty three fourteen. So, First Chronicles, there it is, twenty three fourteen. Let's go over to First Chronicles twenty three fourteen. Let's see what this has to say. Oh, sorry, man, I be spelling it wrong, man. First Chronicles. Okay, twenty three fourteen. Hopefully, I get it right this time. Oh, my dumb ass. Man. Okay. <sighs> First Chronicle. That should be right. I don't know why that's not going. Okay, maybe my ad, Maybe I'm... Maybe I'm just being stupid. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. So, here we go. First Chronicle. 2314. Now, this is after the Exodus. This is way after Joseph, right? Okay. Now concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. So, guys, this is after Deuteronomy 20. This is after Deuteronomy 23, verse 2. This is First Chronicles. So, what happened? <gasps> Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. The Most High is an author of confusion. No, no, this book is tainted. No, the Most High is an author of confusion. No. Let God be the truth and every man a liar. You brothers, y'all hearts are dis y'all hearts are desperately wicked. Because the Most High is not an author of confusion. He said this. The Most High is not an author of confusion. So what's happening here? We got a bunch, and I'm not saying this with pride. I'm saying this out of honesty, and I'm saying this out of my observation. We have a bunch of unlearned brothers out here trying to teach people these falsehoods. These brothers out here who don't have any real elders. These brothers out here who don't have a congregation. And it's like this. 
even if you know even if you don't want to be with brothers who believe in the 12 tribes and that's your excuse for not being part of a congregation a school a church or whatever find brothers who are like-minded and dwell with them you know but y'all don't want to do that but there's a bunch of these brothers running around and that's why we have all this confusion because y'all don't have actual elders to sit your ass down and teach you something y'all y'all you know y'all get a little bit of truth y'all come out here running Running head first, and don't even know that there are so my swords out here, here waiting for your ass. And other brothers out here who you know took the time to study under the elders and asked for wisdom and understanding from the most high got their swords ready to chop your motherfucking heads off, man. And I'm saying this to be honest. And I know y'all might say, you know, oh, why you cussing so much and vulgar language? Well, I'm sorry, I get passionate about this, okay? So it says again, first chronicle 23 14. Now concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. So your definition of a mamzer doesn't make any sense. What makes sense of what a mamzer is, is someone who is of incest. Why? Because it is an actual law that we shouldn't sleep with our we shouldn't sleep with our siblings, we shouldn't sleep with our mother, our father, our aunts, our uncles. Okay, that's incest. We shouldn't do that, and that's why that then the child anything born of that would be an abomination, and that's why they cannot enter into the congregations. Just like uh, the Spartans, three hundred. Remember that weird freak? He couldn't enter into the congregation. Cause he was just weird freaky and stuff and he just that's how we were too man because remember when anything was born with an extra with a blemish we couldn't even sacrifice that stuff to the most high you know what i'm saying so the most high is not often confusion it is very clear that moses sons were into the congregation point blank period okay but also for you guys what about you know what about king david what about king solomon what about hamashiach they're they're great well david's grandmother was a moabite and i'm gonna prove it to you uh king solomon's great grandmother was a moabite and yehoshua great 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 grandmother was a Moabite through uh, through Joseph. So does that not make them Israelites? How in the hell did they get into the congregation when the Mosai said that a mamzer, a bastard, could not enter into the congregation? How is that? You mean to tell me that the Most High made mamzers? rule over Israel when well, he said that they're not even going to get into the congregation the most high guys you have to make sense please please study find you an elder you know what I'm saying if you can't try to find someone who you can trust that you, that you know has background uh, in this truth you know what I'm saying because I've studied with people who's been in this, who's been in this for a very very long time you know, like I think I mentioned earlier, I've been with elders who've been in the original IUPK before it was ISUPK before the split, uh, One West. Um, I had elders who been taught by people who were in some of the earliest Hebrew schools here in America, here in the United States. So you guys, you have to sit down and study this stuff. You have to, you know, have elders. You have to you know study together share information scripture stuff like that because if not if you're a hebrew individual like like i call most of these yisrael guys these 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 internet hebrews um these so-called negro only's because i noticed that most of them are individualized these these so-called negro only cats okay um so we prove right here that so-called mamzers because moses wife was uh, a Kushite 
there's no way around it. You can't say that she wasn't a Kushite. She was a Kushite. Same as uh, uh, Joseph's wife. She was a Hamite. Both of them were Hamites. And they had children by these women. Okay? And they were their children from those women were still considered Israelites. Okay? Um, you know, we want to... And the reason being is because I heard some of you cats saying that, oh, you know, uh, I don't know. I hear two things from you cats. Some of y'all guys say that mixed race people to have a black father and a white, a non-black mother aren't Israelites. But then I hear some of you guys saying that anything that comes out of a black woman's womb is black, which is fucking weird. Um, but the reason why these guys are still Israelites, the reason why Moses' sons who he had with a Hamitic woman, a Kushite woman, are Israelites. Same thing in Joseph's case is because the fathers are Israelites. And how can we prove that? We can go over to Numbers, the first chapter. Okay? So Numbers, first chapter. What is it? Numbers. Numbers. If you go through here, it shows everything. You know, um, sorry. No, this is 15. Numbers. Ah. Uh, Numbers 1. Let me go over to Numbers 1. Uh, so I'm going to read Numbers 1 and 1 so I can give you a setting of what's going on. Uh, and the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month in the second year after the, where after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, so this happened after the Passover. This was during the second month of them being out in the wilderness. So now let me scroll down. Because I'm going to prove to you that um, you are what your father is. The father decides your your race, basically. And it's not based on your physical look. It's based on the spirit that's in you. Okay? That comes through the seed. Through your father. So right here, Numbers 1 and 18. Uh, no, actually, you know what? We're going to start on 16. We're going to start on 16. Uh, no, no, actually, we're going to start on 17. So, Numbers 1 and 17. And Moses and Aaron took these men, which were expressed in their names. And they assembled all of the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families. By the house of their fathers, according to the numbers and the names from 20 years, 20 years old and upward by their poles. Now, we know that according to the scripture, you're really considered a man at 20. Yes, we have ceremony rites before then that usher men, boys into maturity. But you're really a man when you're 20. This is why they allow you to go to war when you're 20. Okay. This is why you really do most of the stuff when you're 20. You know what I'm saying? Um, but what we want to focus on is right here. Okay? It says, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their father. So their pedigree is being based on the house of their father. So let's see what pedigree is. Okay? We're going to see what pedigree means, okay? And you can also do a Google search on pedigree, and it will tell you what a pedigree is. Just in case if you don't want to go to the actual Hebrew, because that's what this is. We're in the coordinates right now. We're, we're going through the Hebrew right now. Uh, pedigree, okay, right here. Okay, so pedigree right here. Yalad. Okay, so... King James translates Strong's following manner. Beget, begets, bear, born, bring forth, bear, travail, midwife, child, delivered, born, birth, labored, brought up. Okay, so, you know, we'll just get to the obvious. We'll, just like we did the last one, we'll see which one fits the bill, okay? Who knows? Quite obvious. So, to bear, to bring forth, beget, gender, travail, uh, to bear, bring forth, of a child uh, of distress of wicked to beget uh, to be born to cause to help bring forth 
to assist to ten as a midwife, blah 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 blah. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's we can we can go through here. A primitive reward to bear young. Uh, casually to beget medically to act as a wife. Nah, we know that's that's not it. Uh, delivered. Uh, pedigrees of son, woman, travail. Okay, so it, it, that one is still pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's still pretty. Uh, it's not really discreet. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I I would let me let me copy the word and I can put it into the what's called. I know I'm being slow over here. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's Google search this. Boom. Okay, so let's go to. Uh, we can just do this right here. Okay, pedigree. To record of descent uh, of an animal showing it to be purebred. Sorry. I'm tired. <laughs> the recorded ancestry, especially upper class ancestry of a person or family. So ancestry. Cinnamon sin sorry. Synonyms. Ancestry. Descent lineage. Genealogy. Sorry, genealogy. Family tree. Extraction. Uh derivation. <laughs> that word is heritage. Heritage, bloodline, dual heritage, background, roots, whatever. You see the point. You you get the point already. Okay. So, uh, a pedigree. Your lineage, your bloodline is based off of your father. Period. You know what I'm saying? So, all you guys who say that so-called people who have a Israelite father and an Israelite mother, you say that they're bastards and mamzers and that they can't be Israelites. You don't know what you're talking about. Moses' sons, Hamashiach, King David, King Solomon, um, also Joseph's sons, prove you guys wrong. The reason why they were considered Israelites is because of Numbers 118 tells you why. You are what your father is. There's no way to get around it. Your mother does, doesn't decide who you are because she's just a vessel. She's just like the, the soil. The man carries the seed. He plants his seed into the soil. And just because you put a, uh, you know, you plant a specific fruit in the soil doesn't mean it's going to be half soil, half dirt. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be that. It's going to be whatever the fruit is that, that is bare. You know what I'm saying? All the tree does is give it nutrients. I mean, all the, the soil does is, is give it nutrients. And it, and it does add properties to the fruits. Because without uh, any type of uh, anything to sit the seed in to give it nutrients, it won't grow. You know what I'm saying? You can't just put seed in, you know, in thin air and then it's going to grow. No, or sit on top of something it's going to grow. No, it needs to be planted into something. Why? Because the soil, no matter what it is, whether it's a cotton ball, it provides nutrients through the water and through the sunlight. That what's called just a vessel. You know what I'm saying? Um, just like women are, they don't carry the seed. So, guys, y'all calling these mixed brothers and these Latinos mamzers? That's complete bullshit. As long as the Latino, uh, their forefather, as long as the Latino forefather is either Negro or Native American, they're good. As long as they go all the way back to Israel, they're good. And it's not your job to decide. You don't have the spirit of discernment to tell who's Israel, who's not. Let the let Hamashiach do it. You know what I'm saying? Let Hamashiach do it. You know, you guys have so much hatred in your heart for these guys. And I believe that's one of the reasons why 
uh, you know, so-called Negro-only cats don't want to accept them because they hate them. You know what I'm saying? But that's not our job. That's not our job to do. That's Mashiach's job. And you guys are up here jumping the gun and you're, you're turning away, you know, God's people from him, period. And we know the Most High is a jealous God and you're making his people go off to, to worship another God? Come on, stop it. Because you're putting yourself in danger, period. You're putting yourself in danger. And I don't think that that's something that you guys want. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go over to Ruth. Go over to Ruth first chapter. Uh, Ruth. Because hmm. I'm going to show you guys that Ruth was a Moabite. Because some of you guys say that Ruth is an Israelite. She's not. Okay. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. Um, and the reason why I say that is because the book of Ruth isn't, is, it's not about Ruth at all. It really only says a very little bit about her. Um, that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of uh, Bethlehem, Judah, uh, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He, his wife, and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi. Sorry, I thought I felt something crawling on me. It's just my damn chain. Um, and the name of his two sons, uh, Melon and Chilion. Uh, Ephratite, Ephrates, and Ephrates of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elon let Naomi's husband died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Or Orpha. I keep wanting to say Oprah. And the other uh, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. Okay? So Elon Lick and his wife Naomi and her two sons went down to um they went down to the land of Moab and they dwelt there ten years, but before then Elon Lick died. And uh, after that, her two sons, Naomi's two sons, took wives uh, from the women of Moab, okay? So these women are Moabites. They're not, <laughs> they're not, um, they're not Israelites. But if you don't believe me, let's go to Ruth 1, I think it's 22. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it says, so Naomi returned to Ruth, I mean, so Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. So, Naomi left with Ruth uh, out of the land of Moab, the country of Moab, and they, they came to Bethlehem. So, we're going to focus on Moabitess right here, okay? Let's go to Moabitis. Let's see what this. Let's let's break this word down. Okay, right here. Okay. So like always, we're gonna use common sense. So Moabitis. It's mentioned six times. Moab mentions two times. Moabitis mentioned um, one time. So it's only mentioned right there, I believe. Um, the King James translates Strong's. Uh, H forty one twenty five in the following manner Moabite which is seven times okay um, so outline of biblical usage Moabite from father what father okay uh, a citizen of Moab an inhabitant of the land of Moab okay y'all may say okay that's not good enough she could have just been an Israelite living in the land of Moab okay okay let's come down here. Boom, boom, can't read that shit. Boom, boom. Patri uh, patronymical form. Okay, anyways. A Moabite or Moabitess, i.e. a descendant of Moab, woman of Moab. <laughs> Moabitish. Okay? People, you can't get around it. She's a she's a Moabite. And this is according to the Hebrew, okay? She's a Moabite. 
She's not an Israelite living in the land of Moab. She is a descendant. A Moabitess is a descendant. A Moabitish is a Moab woman or a Moabitish woman, which is the same damn thing, okay? How we know that Moabitish is the same thing? Because it's listed up here, okay? Because they all have the same meaning. All these words come back to 4125, which all have the same meaning, okay? All have the same definition. So, guys, to stop it, what you're saying is that when you, when you say that the people who have a, a Israelite father and a non-Israelite mother, when you're saying that they're not Israelites, they're bastards, mamzers, remember, you're saying that Hamashiach is a mamzer, a bastard. You're saying that King David, King Solomon are mamzers and bastards. You're saying that Moses' sons and Joseph's sons were mamzers and bastards. You guys don't make sense. Y'all are author of confusion. Y'all are authors of confusion. Not the most high, not this book. Let every man be a liar. Let the let let the yeah, how will be the truth and every man a liar. So don't listen to what a man says. Go and do the research yourself. Because most of you guys who sit here and say that they're not Israelites, y'all are going off of what other Negroes are saying. And then you're running with it. You're not doing your own homework. Sure. My elders sat down and taught me something. You know what? Every time they taught me, guess what? They had a book in my fucking face. They had a book in their face showing me these things. Y'all can't show me nothing. I want y'all to. Every time I see brothers debate y'all Negro only, man, they be tearing y'all guys up, man. Y'all Negro only be getting slain out here, man. And I want to do the same thing to you guys, man, because I'm just tired of it. I'm, I'm tired of the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, let God, let, let the Most High be truth and every man a liar, okay? And you guys, I mean, y'all going off of your own hearts. And we know that the, your heart is desperately wicked. You know what I'm saying? Desperately wicked. Give me one second, guys. Yeah, guys. You can't, you, I mean, really, you can't. Yeah, y'all guys, you can't go off your own hearts, man. You you just can't do that, period. Because, you know, it's, it's going to land you in a bad place. And, you know, I'm not even halfway through this. I'm not even done yet. Because that was just a biblical point. You know what I'm saying? That was just a biblical point. So let's go over to Romans 3, 4. Okay. Okay. <sighs> okay, so Romans 3 and 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall, shall their belief make faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea. Let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome them. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> that thou mightest over be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So, you know. Let let them let them let the most high be the truth, you know what I'm saying? As it is written. He is the truth. Every man is a liar, period. So how we're gonna find out the truth is that we're gonna go by the book. You know, you can be you can be sola scriptura if you want. You know what I'm saying? That's all good. But I like to hit you guys with, you know, with a you know, a few extra hits because some of y'all, like just like the brother that I was gonna debate, he kept talking about like, you know, he they can't be Israelites because they were weak and they didn't want to be slaves. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. I can also show you. I'm going to show you. Uh, Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. 
I just clicked this since this is up to the right twenty thirteen. I can show you according to the scripture how uh, how they uh, how they fit the bill with some of these uh, curses. Well, basically every curse you can go through every curse, but I want to hit the one that 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 uh, affects the most recently. So, right here, Deuteronomy twenty eight thirty nine: Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the one. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, I'm so tired. Thou shalt plant vineyards and drink them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the for the worms shall eat them. Okay, so guys, tell me that the so-called Hispanics are not the ones out there planting these damn fruits, working in these vineyards, working on these fields. They call them pickers, I believe, out there uh, in the Southwest, without they're planting all these fruits and stuff. Yet they get pennies on the dollars, and they're not even that. They don't. That land doesn't even belong to them. That fruit doesn't belong to them. They call them day laborers. Sorry, that's what they call them, day laborers. Out there working hard, bringing a fucking sweat, and they get nothing. They get pennies on the fucking dollar. Okay. Okay. So, anyways, I want to go to Deuteronomy twenty-eight forty-one. It says, "Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them." For they shall go into captivity. Yes, we know that Deuteronomy 28 is talking about uh, what will be false in the last days. Uh, well, it's just, it's, it's really talking about, it's not necessarily just the last days because some of this stuff happened to us in all the other captivities that we were in. But it's not just talking about one time period, is basically what I'm saying. Um, this is still going to affect today, even with Negroes, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of us, are children, our kids are being snatched up by the government, you know, Child Protective Service, where we can't get our kids back. We want them back, but we can't get them, you know what I'm saying? But look, I know you guys have been paying attention to the news and what's been going on lately. Literally, hundreds of thousands of Hispanic kids have been taken from their parents. Let's read this over again. Deuteronomy 28, 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. These kids are locked up in fucking cages. Basically, no, they're concentration camps. These kids are locked up in concentration camps. So don't tell me that they don't fit these prophecies. These kids are locked like fucking animals in. And there is over a hundred, I think they said over 150,000 of these kids that are unaccounted for. That are lost. Like, they, they can't find them anywhere. I believe that they're sacrificing these babies. They're sacrificing them. Or, or selling them off into, you know, sex trafficking, something, something wicked. So let's, uh, where, uh, um, trying to find the other one. Uh, okay. Okay, I think it's like 30. Oh, yeah, we can go to this one right here. Uh, Thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. So they're called spicks. Sometimes they even be called niggers. <laughs> they're called spicks. Sometimes niggers, beaners, wetbacks. Some, sometimes they're called tacos, Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, this fits them right here. You can do this for Native Americans and so called uh, Hispanics. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not uh, eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. The so-called Hispanics forefathers were Native Americans, and this happened exactly to their people. Happened exactly to their people. But this is the first time I'm going to go to right here. Thy sons and daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thy hand. That's exactly what's going on with these Latino kids. These so-called Hispanic kids. Their kids are being taken from them. 
And the parents are locked up too, and they're wondering where their kids are, but they can't do anything about it. It's completely out of their hands. So, guys, you can—I mean, you can go to Hold to the Robbie Twenty Eight and apply it because some of these things happen to Hispanics and Native Americans early on, just like it did to us. You know, some of these things are happening to us right now, just like with the Latinos and the Native Americans. I can go to this through this whole thing. Maybe I should break down. You know what? I'm probably gonna make a video in the future breaking down this whole Deuteronomy 28, so I can show you that uh, it fits the bill for Latinos too <laughs> and Native Americans. Yeah, so I I need you guys to stop. Also, um, I want you guys to answer the question about why they spoke Hebrew here. Why Native Americans spoke Hebrew? I want y'all to account for that, like the Lost Luna Stones, uh, the stones that are in, uh, is it New Hampshire? There's like a rock that is written in Hebrew. Uh, I think it's New Hampshire or Connecticut. I can't remember which one, which of the states it's in. Also here in Ohio, they have the, I think they're called the, the Hopewell Stones. I can't remember what they're called, uh, but they have the Hebrew on it. Um, and then Christopher Columbus, uh, when he came over to the Americas, he also had Hebrew interpreters with him. Uh, I want you all to read this right here. Well, I want to read this to you guys a little bit of it. No, you know what? I'm actually going to read this one. This one's better. Okay. Native American Jews, a fulfillment of prophecy. Okay. In 1650, Rabbi Mish... Uh, Manishi Ben Israel, chief rabbi of Amsterdam, recorded an incredible story in his book, Mekiv Yisrael. See, there you go. See, guys, what I tell you? <laughs> this is Yiddish bullshit. He relates a conversation that he had with a Jewish Dutch explorer of the Americas. The explorer related how he had, how he made contact with the Native Americans, but after trying to communicate with them in every possible European language, he had no success. Being a Jew, as was the first mate, these two began to talk amongst themselves in Hebrew. To utter amazement, upon hearing him speak Hebrew to his first mate, the Native American chief responded in kind and stated, Shema Yisrael. This is only one of the uh, very numerous, very numerous people, very numerous instances that seem not to only suggest but to actually prove that indeed somehow in some way a number of biblical Israelites managed to leave the Holy Land over 2,000 years ago <clears throat> the northern tribe <clears throat> second Ezra <clears throat> uh, over 2,000 years ago and by the hand of God found their way to the shores of what we call the Americas it was known that the Tumadic times uh, we don't have to read all that but that's my point right there also Christopher Columbus uh, you know he had a if you don't believe me I think the dude name was De Torres the interpreter that he had it was a Hebrew interpreter that he had brought over here you know with him why would he bring a guy over here who spoke Hebrew Aramaic and Arab you know Arabic why he was coming over to the Americas. You know what I'm saying? That makes no fucking sense at all. Um, so anyways, I want to show you guys that uh, even Native Americans were sent on slave ships. I'm going to show you this, okay? Colonists shipped Native Americans abroad as slaves. They were shipped to countries like the UK, Spain, uh, the Philippines. Some of them were taken there. Um, some of them were taken to Northern Africa, um, just many different places. Some of them were sent to different places in the Americas. So here we go. Native Americans included, uh, non-combatants who surrendered during King Philip's war to avoid enslavement were enslaved at nearly the same rate as captured combatants. Research shows Native American slavery is a piece of, uh, is a piece of the history of slavery that has been glossed over says Linford D. Fisher, associate professor of history at Brown University between 1492 and 1880, between two 
and okay between two and uh, 5.5 million Native Americans were enslaved in the Americas in addition to the 12 million 12.5 million African slaves while native while natives had forced <laughs> sorry while natives had been forced into slavery and servitude as early as 1636 it was not until King Philip's war that natives were enslaved in nar in large numbers Fisher writes that in the study um, the 1675 and 1676 war pitted Native Americans uh, sorry Native American leader King Philip also known as the Medicom <laughs> And his allies against the English colonists during the war New England colonies sorry during the war New England colonies routinely shipped Native Americans as slaves to Barbados Bermuda Jamaica uh, the as Rolis, I believe this is in North Africa uh, Spain uh, the Tangri of North Africa no that's North Africa I, I, I don't know what this is I don't know what this is. Fisher says, okay, so yeah. Okay, so anyways. Uh while Africans who were enslaved did not know that they that they were Oh my god, I'm sorry, guys, I'm tired. Uh, while Africans who were enslaved did not know where they would be taken, Native Americans understood that they could be sent to the Caribbean plantations and face extremely harsh treatment for, uh, far from their homes and communities, according to the study. Uh, fear of this fate uh, spurred some Native Americans to pledge to fight to the death, while others surrendered, hoping to avoid being sent overseas. <laughs> the study found so guys you can read this whole article you can read this whole article just go with this and you'll find it I don't think I'm gonna be nice enough to put it in the description but there's so many studies out there guys so many studies I also want to show you guys something real quick um, I'm about to pause pause real quick so I can pull it up for you guys okay so I'm back so I want you guys to pay attention to this right okay this is from a book. I can't remember what the book is called. Let me see. The book is called The Origins of the American Indians. Okay. Okay. In the book it says the Mexicans are originally of the ten tribes captured by Salamanzar, who was the king of Assyria at the time. Remember? And the family of Issachar, whom the Indians recognized as their special ancestor. And you can read this about a lot of Native Americans. Like they, they realize that their that their roots go back to Israel. This is why they wear fringes in a border of blue, guys. Come on. I mean, to me it's so obvious. I've showed you guys so many times in my book, if you don't believe me, you know, you you uh you know what? I'm actually gonna pull it up. And I'm going to pull it up for you guys so you can see once again. Because according to, to Deuteronomy, uh, the Most High told us, you know, to wear uh, fringes. But not only fringes. Why? Because other cultures wear fringes. But he told us to wear fringes with the ribbon of blue on, the, on our borders. You know, so that we can look down on them and remember to keep the laws. The Most High is not author of confusion, like I said before. So why would he make Native Americans wear fringes with a border of blue? These people wore fringes with borders of blue. You can't really see it. You can't really see it too well from here. But there's a border of blue. You can barely see it right there. Border of blue with fringes. This is what the Native Americans wore, okay? These people who you say aren't Israelites, okay? And look at their skin color. Yeah, they may not be 100%. I'm sure they probably mixed because they wore captives to Assyria. Um, and also you can read that they, they actually looked ethnic, eth ethnically different after they came from Assyria. So they probably mixed them. I'm sure they mixed with them and, um, you know, decided not to come back. But let me show you something, guys. Look at this. Fringes. Fringes. Ribbon and blue. There you go. I just want to know. And these things are also fringes too. They also use feathers as fringes. Um, that's one Native American. They also use hair as fringes too. 
Okay, so here we go. Ribbon and blue, just like some of you cats wear today, in fringes. Okay. I, I don't see you guys. You don't do enough research, man. Y'all just don't do enough research. Period. Um, you can see the ribbon blue right there on his fringes. You know, you can see it right there on his fringes. There you go, ribbon of blue, fringes. Uh, I have some more in my book. I upload them. I don't think I upload them. Oh. Uh, but guys, come on. And these are basically the same thing as godaliums or, or some people call them tassels. They have blue in there hanging off. Um, yeah. But anyways, guys, just do your research, man. Native Americans are known for wearing fringes and, and ribbon and blue. So just, you know, really just study, man. Just study, please study. Because some of you guys are ignorant, you know, unintentionally ignorant. And some of you guys are willfully ignorant, you know what I'm saying? But you have no excuse, especially when people are trying to teach y'all, man. So, guys, yeah, I got the ribbon and blue. I'm getting it. Yeah, so, anyways, I showed you guys that mamsers and bastards are nothing more than incest babies. That is not talking about a mixed race person. <laughs> That's not what it's talking about. Because Moses' sons, Joseph's sons, David, King David, King uh, King Solomon, uh, Hamashiach, they're all of mixed ancestry, yet they're still in the congregation of the Most High. I showed you that the land of the north is America, and that, you know, the house of Judah, not the minority, not the, not the remnant, the house of Judah and the house of uh, Israel will walk out of the land of the north together. Um, you know, it can't be Africa at all, according to your definition. If so, then that means we're going to another captivity, which is probably Syria or Russia to you guys. You know, no, stop it, okay? It's not so. That's not what it is. Um, but yeah, you know, I showed you articles, you know, that they spoke Hebrew. Hey, you can just Google this stuff for real, man. Like, you, you really can. Uh, Hebrew in the Americas. Oh, sorry. Hebrew stones in Ohio. See, these are the ones right here. That's what they call the Newark stones, the Newark holy stones. It's written in Hebrew. Um, <laughs> it's written in Hebrew. It's found here in Ohio. Um, okay, go to Hebrews uh, in New Mexico because it's lost in the stones. You can find this. <laughs> the Hebrews. <laughs> Uh, I believe they, they have them all over the country in uh, Hebrew. Which one was uh, I? I think in Puerto Rico they have some, if I remember correctly. Yeah, here you go, Paleo Hebrew in Puerto Rico. Uh, they find them everywhere, man. I believe there's. I mean, they're really all over the country. Um, Oh yeah, right here in uh, Tennessee. <laughs> the back creek inscription. Look at this. Guys, please stop it. Stop that bullshit, please. Because it, it's so much evidence. So much evidence. Oh, uh, there's another one like in... Uh, Hebrew... One stone in America. I'm trying because it's an actual like big fucking rock. <laughs> yeah. Got the commandments.
comments on everything, man. Like, that's sick, man. But yeah, you guys want to sit here and say no, 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 no. I'm trying to find another one because there's one in, like, uh, and pre Columbian. I think it's like somewhere in what would I say like Milwaukee. Oh no, well, I'm tired. So I will talk to you guys later because, like I said, I proved that the American Smoky Brew um, that these stones are everywhere. Um, the explorers came over here, and you know, with Hebrew interpreters, they even came over and. and the Native American spoke Hebrew to them, and yeah. So, guys, if you want to debate, come come at your boy. You know, the Most High gave me this knowledge, and uh, I'm out here to teach it. So, I'll talk to you guys later. You know, well, before I go, I want to give you know honors to the Most High. I want to give honors to Yehoshua or Yahweh, as I call him, Mashiach. I want to give honors to him for his sacrifice and for the blueprint. For us to follow um, also I want to you know give you know shout outs to my elders and to the brothers and sisters out here who are keeping the faith they're going strong you know and they're doing good works um, so yeah I'm gonna give shout, shout outs to you guys y'all take care Shalom and y'all bless